Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're going to make a blood orange margarita. Ah, I love this drink. It's a great drink. And you know, whenever I go for Mexican food, they See? always have lots of different kind of margaritas. Yeah. So they've got like their special margarita, and then they've got all these different ones. One thing I've never seen is a blood orange margarita. I don't think I've ever seen one either. Yeah. I saw a pineapple margarita the other day. I'm thinking like, what? Yeah, and they I come in all order. sorts of colors and everything like that. So um, if you like margaritas, this is a great one to try. If I was getting electrocuted the next day, you know, when you get your last meal. You get your last meal, yep. If I got a last drink, it would be some sort of margarita. Would your meal be Mexican food then? No. <laughs> <laughs> it would either be like spaghetti and meatballs. Really? Yeah, or like a Big Mac, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I would have. You gotta be thinking about these things. I that could know. happen, you know. It could happen. Knowing how fast you drive down the freeway sometimes. Well, you have plenty of time. I mean, from the time <laughs> they, you know, convict you to the time that they're gonna put you at rest. You've got years to figure it out, don't <laughs> exactly. you? Exactly, yep. yep. That's a good point. You know, hey, that would make a great catalog. What's that? Death Row catalog, where it's all like different meals that you could order so they can sit there and dream about their last meal. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ooh, I'm gonna have that, I'm gonna have that. <laughs> It won't let you eat too much because after you get electrocuted or whatever, you're going to vomit it all up probably. Or, you know, they say that you do evacuate your bowels. So Mexican food is probably the worst thing. Now, where did you hear that? When people die, they evacuate their bowels. I don't think so. Yeah. Like when they die a violent death or what? Well, violent, I'm sure. But, you know, if not violent, slowly. Well, I suppose if you die, your muscles would all relax. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I don't, you don't know. You about don't lay that. there completely silent. You still like expel gases and whatnot. We need to find ourselves a medical examiner and I ask him do. that. <laughs> we do. <laughs> that has to be not. I don't think I would have heard of that if that was a common thing. Oh, have you ever weird. Have you ever come across a dead body? No. No. Well, not human. Not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you you are a deer hunter. I'm a deer hunter. They do they poop? They poop. Really? Oh yeah. Right when they get shot or after they're lying there? Sometimes, like, well, I don't know. Because by the time I walk up on them, you know, they've been already down. Mm. It's right. not like I can see in my scope, like, right when I shoot them. You're not you know? watching their ass? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I shoot at them, they're running for a while. So and then i got to track them down. But, well, that's interesting. All yeah. right. This is not sounding like a very appetizing drink that we're talking about <laughs> pooping it's all still, the time. It's still a great drink. So basically what you're going to use is your favorite aged tequila. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to use some Cointreau. Uh, we got some agave nectar. And then, of course, we'll use some lime juice and then... Blood, blood orange, orange juice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Blood oranges come into season just after Christmas time usually. Mm -hmm. And then go through March, April. Kind of the holy season. Yeah. Come in at Christmas, out at Easter. I'm always... I can never remember that typically. So I'm always asking the produce guy, are the blood oranges in yet? Is it the same produce guy? It's the same like, guy. You crazy you think I'm crazy. So now we have this sort of secret code. I go like this. <laughs> I don't say anything. I go, and he goes, Not yet. no, I know. <laughs> you have that, you know, what do you call it? ESPN? Yep. Yeah. ESP. <laughs> that was a little sports humor there. Oh, yeah. I get that. You can use that if you want, no charge. <laughs> I've heard that one before. Really? Oddly enough. Yeah. From me? It was in a movie. Did I, I get that from a you, movie? I think you did. Oh my gosh, I thought that was original to and me. And I swear I said that to you years ago. I thought that was like of my own invention. Uh, oh, nope. That's very disappointing. <laughs> Not as smart and funny as I thought I was. Well, sometimes. You know, th people can think up things independently together. Wait a minute. That's true. Independently together, that makes no sense either. <laughs> it's kind of two options. Do you remember what movie it was from? I have no clue. Hmm. All right. No clue. Let's make this. Uh, two ounces of tequila. Mm -hmm. This is the Don Julio 1942. These tequilas are all in these tall, tall bottles. All right, it's kind of a fad right now. Mm -hmm. It's not going to last. Do you know why? Bottles are expensive to make? No, I don't think so. Well, yeah. But if what they charge for this, they can afford the bottle. Right. No, because <clears throat> retailers don't have the shelf space for all these things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, you... Hey, this is a, a guaranteed way that you make sure you get on the top shelf. Oh, good point. Because <laughs> then you can't, you know, go on one of the lower shelves because there might not be room. Well, I like so they the way have you're to thinking. put you on the top. Nice, smart. 
Three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau. So that'd be a great way to, uh, you know, if you're not making a top shelf liquor, you could fool people into it. I top know. Shelf. <laughs> that is a great idea. I like the way your mind thinks. You've got good business savvy. One ounce of agave nectar. I'm going to get started on the limes. We're doing, how much lime juice are we doing? Oh yeah, one and a half ounces of lime juice. I'm going to borrow your beaker. There you go. Thank you. The limes were particularly microscopic this week. Might be that type of year or time of year. Don't it's just not growing real big. It could be. It's going to take you one and a half of those. I know. <laughs> it's not like we live in San Diego and we can just reach out and grab some from right. our lime bush. These are from a lime bush because they're small. That's my theory. They're bigger than from a lime tree. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I am glad I'm mixing this to you. All right, one and a half. And then we need three quarters of an ounce of blood orange juice. It's a shame that blood oranges don't come in season a month earlier because then you'd have them for ha Halloween, right? Right. Perfect for like would be. your vampire drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could uh, like artificially produce them by kind of putting them in a colder room because that's what, you know, that's what makes that red color. It's kind of colder season. They've got a, kind of that genetic disposition for it. So you're thinking of bringing the trees into a room? Yeah, like a colder room. and Why not? That'd work. Well, they make watermelon or they make watermelon square. You think they could get blood oranges out a month earlier? Right, exactly. Can't be rocket science. <laughs> Add some ice dish, shake it up. My salivary glands are salivating as we speak. I know, you love these. It's got a nice pink color to it. Yep. And what we're going to do, we just take a little wedge of lime and a wedge of blood orange. Mm -hmm. Pop that right in there, and there you have your blood orange margarita. Delicious. Enjoy. Cheers.